We're going to start with two over one game forcing. And what this is, this is essentially just a system that most people are playing these days. And judging from my recent poll, I, I did a little uh, panel at the Teachers Association at the last Nationals. And a lot of bridge clubs and bridge teachers are not quite to the point of teaching two over one to beginners yet. But I hope that we're going to get closer to that because really the worst thing you can do is learn a system to bid and bridge and then find out you can't play with any partners because everyone's playing two over one. So if we can all get on board and start teaching two over one and learning it from the start, it's going to make our lives a whole lot easier. And I'm going to show you a hand that is a typical problem if you're not playing two over one as game forcing. Right, the system we're about to learn tonight is two over one game forcing. And this is a hand that in a natural system is harder to bid than in a game forcing system. The auction here starts with one spade by our partner and we bid two hearts and they bid three clubs. So the question here is if we're not playing two hearts as game forcing, what the heck do we do with this hand, right? Do we just bid three no trump and hope that's right? Do we bid four hearts and hope that's right? How do we kind of get the information we need and find the best possible spot for our our hands together, right? And two over one, this hand is super simple, which we'll see in a second. But if we're not playing two over one as a game force, we have to have really solid agreements in a standard system to be able to handle a hand like this that kind of knows it has game but isn't sure where yet. That's the whole point of this system. When we have good hands together, we want to bid those hands as deliberately as we possibly can because the slower we go, the more information we get to exchange. And that's where we get to find out if we can play higher than just game, right? And that's what the system is made for. Well, let's talk about just the parameters of the system first before we jump into some hands. First of all, here are the rules for two over one game forcing. And folks, as always, if you have any questions as I'm going, type it into the chat and I'll get to it as we go, or I'll just tell you we'll reserve it for later. So the rules of two over one game forcing. This is only going to be used in non-competitive auctions, which means we're the only ones bidding, at least initially, right? So it's always going to go partner opening the bid of one of a suit and our right-hand opponent passing, right? And that's the second rule right here. This is only ever used when we open one of a suit initially. Right, so we're not going to use it, obviously, over one no trump or anything else. It's just going to be one of a suit and then some sort of two over one response. And a two over one response is a normal non-jump response of a suit. And that will occur at the two level after a one level opening bid. These are the bids that we will play as game forcing bids. And after we make a bid like this, both of us, the opening bidder and the responder, will automatically know that we belong in game. So neither one of us will be allowed to pass before we reach the game level. It's a huge luxury to be able to know that no matter what you do, if you didn't bid game, your partner will, right? Or they'll bid something else and you'll bid that game, right? It's a nice luxury when you have very good hands. And this might be obvious to some of you, but it's worth stating anyway. It's only used when both players are unpassed hands. And if you just think of the logic of that, folks, if partner opens one of a suit and you make a two over one game forcing response, but you passed originally, can that actually exist? And the answer is no, right? If you have enough to game force opposite an opening bid, you had enough to open the bidding initially, right? So this is only ever going to be used when both of us are unpassed hands. All right, so let's take a look at some two over one auctions. You'll start to notice a pattern here. Right? This is a normal two over one auction. Our partner opened a spade or North opened a spade and it went pass and South bid two clubs. And this shows 13 or more total points and four or more cards in the club suit. So these should always be natural-ish type bids, at least four and sometimes five in a suit. And they will also always show 13 plus total points. When I say total points, I may be including distribution in that. There are times, and this is a good auction here, where we might have three spades and know we have a spade fit. All right, but we don't really have any great bids that show game forcing hands in three spades. So we are gonna bid two clubs first and then raise spades later. So let's say we had like a, an 11 count, but we had a void in diamonds. 
that would be worth a game forcing bid because if we know we have a spade fit and we also have shortness in another suit we can add all those points together and that gets us to our game forcing range all right so this is one spade two clubs one spade two diamonds is also game forcing two over one 13 plus total points and four plus cards in the diamond suit this is the special one one spade past two hearts and this is the only one that's going to be like this folks this shows 13 plus total points the same as all the others but it guarantees five or more cards in the heart suit right so this is a pretty normal treatment here because majors are such a priority we want to be a little more specific with our bids here so this is always five or more cards in the heart suit when you make this call all right, and the next few bids are going to look a lot similar to the first few. One heart past two clubs, 13 plus and four plus clubs, and two diamonds the same. And last but not least, one diamond past two clubs. This is still a two over one response, and that is absolutely going to show 13 plus points and four or more clubs in four or more cards in the club suit. Uh, good, we have a question here. What does a three, four, four, three, three distribution bid? Uh, the first question is, which suits are we talking about? And if that is spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs, if partner opens a spade, we would either do a two, two of a minor suit, two clubs most likely, and that would just be game forcing, and we might be lying a little bit there. Or there's a reasonable call for this. You can jump to three no trump. That would kind of be like a balanced choice of games, right? But you're bringing up a pretty interesting problem with pretty much any system you're playing. When you're kind of flat distribution, if you don't have a good systemic bid for this, sometimes you just have to make a normal two over one response. The biggest mistake, though, and let me go back to the one we're talking about here. The biggest mistake would be to actually bid two hearts with a hand that only had four, right? So just never disobey this rule here. When you bid two over one, one spade, two hearts, just always have five plus hearts. Okay. All right, so let's jump into the most important slide here. Those hands that we just saw, they only, those are the only two over one game forcing sequences ever. All right, so just these six bids. And you'll notice a few things that they have in common. The obvious one is East never bids, right? If East bids in any of these auctions, we do not play two over one as game forcing. And five out of the six of these auctions start with one of a major, right? So this is almost always where we're going to see a two over one bid, one of a major, and then two of something else. That's not a jump, right? One diamond past two clubs absolutely is game forcing and that might be a little more specific actually it actually denies four card majors and it says we're in a game forcing auction so all of these should be agreed to be game forcing bids pretty much all natural showing 13 plus points all right so take a look at that auction we looked at originally this makes the game forcing auction so much easier to navigate one spade we bid two hearts with our hand our partner bid three clubs, and now we're just allowed to bid, make a nice, comfortable three heart bid. And the three heart bid just says, hey, partner, I have six hearts, right? I already showed you five by bidding two hearts. Now when I bid three hearts, I'm showing six of them, and I'm not sure where we belong. Right? We get to navigate this because we know partner will never pass three hearts because our two heart bid forced us to game. And this is the full deal here. You can see that partner had just kind of a minimum-ish type hand with two hearts. And now we get to play what looks like probably a better four heart contract than a three no trump contract for sure. Right? It turns out we could probably make the same in both, but much, much safer to be in our heart suit for sure. All right, let's take a look at a little bit of a reminder of the rules. We're only ever going to use this in a non-competitive auction. The two over one bid is never a jump response. Right? We're never going to jump to the two level and have it be game forcing and natural, right? Usually people either make a conventional bid with those or they'll have it be preemptive, right? And after a two over one bid, our partnership cannot pass below the game level. Something you might forget once in a while, but trust me, you can only forget that once or twice because partner's face is always priceless in those spots, right? When you pass in a game forcing auction, you get the, the most interesting looks from across the table. So let's take a look at this auction here. 
one diamond past two hearts. Is two hearts game forcing? Just type that into the chat. If you think it's game forcing, just type game force. And if you don't, say no. So game forcing or not. Good. So most of you are right here. This is not a game forcing bid. It is technically a two over one response, right? I'm bidding two over one, one diamond past two hearts. However, remember the rule of two over one game forcing. It is never a jump. It's always going to be a higher ranking suit at the one level, followed by a lower ranking suit at the two level, which is why it's almost always a major that gets opened. All right. Uh, there was a question intermixed in there by Bob. Uh, the problem comes up when partner opens a lower ranking suit. And you're right. As we saw on that one slide, we're never going to have a two over one response when partner opens a club. Right? That just doesn't exist because it always has, it, it can never be a jump, right? We're rarely going to see it over a diamond. And that's why we have conventions like fourth suit forcing, uh, new minor forcing, things like that, that help us navigate the auctions where we can't just game force directly. It's a very good question. So the reason this slide is here is because this is the most common mistake I see in two over one. We see people going one diamond and they'll wake up with like five hearts and 14 points and they'll jump to two hearts. And they don't realize that they have just made either a conventional bid or they've essentially just shown a really bad hand with six hearts they've preempted. Okay, so that is definitely not a two over one bid. So get that out of your heads right there. It's never, ever going to be a jump. So we're just going to go from there. All right. Ooh, uh, I have a question here. Is it forcing even though not game forcing? Uh, technically, no, unless you have an agreement as to what this weird jump shift would be. Uh, most partnerships these days are playing one of a minor, like this auction, one diamond, two hearts or two spades as simply weak and super preemptive, like a super bad hand with six plus on your suit, right? So it's essentially a way to preempt the opponents when we have bad hands. All right, the most important thing about two over one is to take your time, especially when you have extra stuff. And this is called the principle of fast arrival and it's kind of the bedrock of the two over one system. We want a game force very low so that we have time to kind of show our partner different ranges of our hand. And here's how it goes. When you know what contract your side belongs in and you have a minimum, you bid to that contract immediately or at least as quickly as you possibly can. And fast arrival will always show a minimum for the hand ranges you've shown up to that point. And let me show you a hand as an example here. Your partner opens one heart and you bid two clubs. And now partner bids two hearts and you're wondering what to do here. There are two different bids we can make with this hand and one of them shows a better hand than the other. Right, first of all, and you can just type this into the chat, we're gonna use the app in a second, but I kinda like these little random polls here. In this case right here, which bid would show a better hand? three hearts or four hearts, All right? So which bid shows a better hand on this auction? And remember, at this point, we agree that two clubs is game forcing. So which of the two choices, 3H or 4H, shows a better hand? And this is kind of what two over one flips on its head of traditional bidding uh, with a standard sequence you know jumping around is usually meant to show better hands however in a game forcing sequence which we have here the three heart bid always shows a better hand than the four heart bid and this is exactly what this principle of fast arrival is the faster we get to game the lower our values are so you have to think about it in terms of what you've already shown though. This is the big stumbling block with a lot of people. When you bid two clubs, you've already shown 13 plus points, okay? So in this case, when partner bids two hearts 
if you jump to four hearts, you're showing the lower end of your your 13 plus point range. So you're probably showing this hand, like a, a pedestrian 13 or 14. Now this is, you know, this might has, have its merits. It does have very good intermediate cards, but this is just kind of a flattish minimum. So technically four hearts here would just be this type of hand, something on the minimum side. And three hearts would be, hey, I have some good stuff, right? So that's the key on this one. In all of these situations, and here is that hand on the left, by the way. And the, these notes, I'm going to send you a link to and also just post it with this video. This is just the perfect hand to just play four hearts. We don't want to play any higher. And if we bid three hearts, we would certainly want to explore playing higher than just game. And when we're in a game force, we can afford to slow down because that's the whole point of the system. Right? The slower we go, the better our hands are. So take a look at the right side of the screen and tell me what your next bid is with this hand. Oh, good question here. Uh, the, the question from Bob was for the, for the previous one. And let me just jump back here for a second. Why bid two clubs and not two diamonds? Uh, the answer is if you're going to bid two over one with a four card suit, always bid the lowest one you have, right? It just shows it, it allows for the most possible room because if partner has four diamonds, guess what you're going to hear from them next? You're going to hear two diamonds, right? And if partner has three clubs or four clubs, you're going to hear three clubs also, but now you've just popped it up to an extra level, right? So always, if you're choosing between these suits as a responder, go with the lower game forcing bid first. And that just provides the most room, the exact principle we're trying to talk about here. So after this auction on the right partner opened a heart we bid two diamonds and they bid three diamonds what's our call with this hand and we're talking about the hand on the right hand side of the screen what are we bidding after one heart two diamonds three diamonds I can see we're, we're all putting in a, a good answer here. This is absolutely three hearts. And it's twofold here. First of all, don't think that you've shown a fit at any point when you bid two over one, right? Because you're always bidding a new suit. So you knew when partner opened a heart that you were likely going to play hearts. The only thing that partner doesn't know is that right you haven't told them yet so if if you game force and you have three card support in their major or you game force and they rebid their major you know not now you're going to just show your fit right here so always do that first and it is a hand with extra values right this is a hand that's much much better than the last hand we saw so in this case we bid just three hearts because we want partner with extra stuff to start exploring a slam and we'll talk about how we, we do that when we get into the problems. But but here, slow is good, right? Slow is a better hand than just four hearts. And that will always show the ability to play higher than just game if partner has the right hand. And this is the entire hand. Uh, you can see that the north hand <laughs> certainly liked to hear that we had extra values, but did not care to go any further. As, as we can see, they have a kind of a, a ratty 12 count. Right, so this is a perfect spot to just bid four hearts. And now we know as South that we don't have to go exploring slam. We told partner we had these extra values and they said, I am not interested at all. And some of you might be thinking, how would we know if they were interested? That's where those control bids and or just straight up key card and things like that will come in, right? Especially if we've shown extra values, let's say partner has like an 18 count. You would normally just hear partner bid four no Trump from that point. Because we've shown not, not only do we have 13 plus, we think we have a little bit more than that because of that nice slow approach we made with three hearts. All right, guys, that is the end of the slideshow, which means it is time to jump into bid box. All right, so we are going to, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do right here. You're going to type in bidbox.xyz in your browser. I can see some of you are already logged in, which is terrific. But for those of you that haven't jumped in yet, open up either a new browser window or even your phone and open up a browser in that and just type in bidbox.xyz. 
and you will see this page. And I'm going to click enter class. I'm going to put in my email address right here because you get a copy of this sent right to you if everything goes well. And I'm going to click continue. Right, and you'll just get a little bit of a waiting screen saying thank you, class will start soon. And we will now test you on a bunch of problems. I think I have about 30 loaded up. We'll get to as many of them as we can that are just gonna give you some two over one auctions and some experience from both sides of the table. Right? Next week, same time, we're gonna do one no Trump forcing. That's probably, I can't say probably, it definitely is the harder part of the system, right? Cause it covers the hands that aren't good enough to game force. Uh, only when we open a major though. So it's a little bit more confusing. So we'll spend a little bit more time on that. <clears throat> and then the last week, I'm just going to put a whole bunch of hands on bid box for you, and we're going to churn through what I call the final exam. We'll do some two over one, some one no forcing, and just package it all together. And we'll try to bid like 10 or 15 hands together to their completion. So I'm excited about this. All right, we have about, I would say, a little over half of you that are watching on YouTube or in bid box. And for the rest of you, just type bidbox.xyz, and I'm typing it into the chat, into any browser and sign right in and you will see this screen to start and those of you that are playing along with bidbox you probably have it already your hand is always the one on the bottom and you choose your bid just like i'm doing here you can type in or press any number you want one two and then any bid you want to make here right it's not committed until you actually press the red bid button right so if you type one and you meant to type two just type two instead Right, I keep saying type, just press two. <laughs> All right. So I'll give you guys a second to pop your bids in. I see six of you a bit already. What do you do when partner opens a spade and it goes pass and this is your hand. And at this point after the lesson, we are assuming that you are all playing two over one is a game forcing bid. So anytime we make a non jump to the two level, it is game forcing. All right, we're doing well here. We got almost half of you just firing in an answer and I don't see any mistakes yet. Is this too easy so far? All right, so we'll give it a couple more seconds. One spade pass to you. What are we bidding? And I will pop my bid in right now. This is for sure two hearts. And I can show you now that everybody got it right. This was a good first question. This is a classic two over one bid. Right? We have certainly 13 or more total points. We do have a spade fit, which is nice, but we don't have any way to show this type of hand right away. This is always a two-step process when you have three card support. So we start by showing our values. Excuse me, we just bid two hearts and we get to game force and we fully intend to support some spades later good job everybody all right next hand so after our two heart bid our partner bid two spades and the question is what is your call with this hand so you've already game forced and now partner bid two spades your call and welcome to everybody that showed up a little bit late. You didn't miss anything, really. We're only on hand two of the bid box. So just jump into bidbox.xyz. Open that in any browser window. Or if you're watching this on your browser and you want to use your phone, you can pop it into your phone as well. Bidbox.xyz in your browser, and you'll get to make all the decisions right along with this. If you are not watching this live, which is August 8th, you will not be able to use Bidbox during the class. <laughs> We've had a few issues with that quite a few people trying to gain access to a, a replay class we will not be here likely if you're watching it on replay but doesn't mean you can't make your choices along with us and see if you're right afterwards all right good luck. so this time we have a little difference of opinion which is good i like to see that most of you are making the correct bid which is three spades all right we have about 75 percent of you getting the correct call here and I, I forgot this little quote I put on the the results screen slow with stuff and that means that when you've game forced and you have more than just your minimum and this definitely qualifies for that for a number of reasons first of all 
when we rebid our suit, in this case, our partner rebid two spades, for now, and you can change this later on because there are kind of two camps on this particular issue, but for now, the easiest and best way to play this is to agree that that shows six cards in the spade suit, okay? So we not only have a nine card spade fit now, we have extra stuff. We have 15 high card points. We have a side five card suit and a doubleton. Right? This is a very good hand, certainly extra stuff. You don't need to have a ton extra to slow down, right? Even like some good 14s are going to be slowing down because of either their shape or just the quality of the cards they have. So when you have any extra stuff, you're just going to go slow with that stuff. Three spades. It's very important that you show the spade fit though. A couple of you were kind of outside of spades here and now partner doesn't think they have a spade fit, right? So when you game force right away and you have a fit, don't forget to show that, right? Really important that partner kind of knows this is where, this is where I'm going to be. All right, great. Next case. Now, after you bid three spades, partner bids four spades. What are you going to bid now? And for those of you that might be reticent to press your bid button, don't worry, this is totally anonymous. I can't tell who's doing what, and neither can anybody else. So do, do not hesitate to make a decision, because mistakes are good if you make them, and, you know, when you get it right, it feels good. And everyone's feeling good on this hand, because it's passed for sure. Right? The beauty of these situations is we know that partner knows we have extra values, right? We slowed down. We said, look, partner, I definitely know we have a spade fit and I have some goodies over here. I have some stuff. And they said, good, that'll do real well for our four spade contract, right? They showed no interest in going further. Interest looks like the other bids, right? Anything other than four spades here would show some mild interest or serious interest in playing in a slam. Right, so when partner just kicks it into game, be confident that you told your story. Now, again, if you had like 20 points, you would continue, right? Because you knew as soon as partner opened that you were going to play slam, right? So don't think of this four spade bid as a bad hand. They've already opened the bidding, okay? So they certainly have a good enough hand to do that, but not good enough to go any further, even when we show extra stuff. All right, next case. This time our partner opens a spade and we have this hand. Your call. And remember folks, if you have any questions specific to any of these, just type that right into the chat on YouTube and we can cover those as we go. And anyone else that wants to jump into Bidbox, bidbox.xyz in your browser on any device will get you in on the action for tonight's class. This one looks too easy. Everybody's nailing it. We remembered that two hearts shows five or more cards in the heart suit. So in this case, we always bid two clubs, right? We have a four card club suit. We certainly do not want to show five plus hearts, which is what two hearts would show. So we just game force with this bid, right? Two clubs, 13 plus points, four or more clubs. Right, and now after our two club bid, our partner bids two hearts. And this, by the way, is why we never bid two hearts without five of them. Right? We always bid two of a minor instead because partners are going to bid two hearts if they have four hearts. Even when they have six spades and four hearts, they, will re they should be rebidding two hearts. So we get to find our fits in this way. The question is, after partner bids two hearts... What's our follow-up? What do we do with this hand? We 
take it slow because we have some stuff. Right, we have a very good hand for partner. We have 16 high card points plus a doubleton in their original suit, which is actually really good. Whenever partner has five of a suit and you have two and you have a side trump fit, that is usually all systems go. Right? It will provide partner an opportunity to maybe rough out that suit and make it good. Right, so three hearts is absolutely our bid. And then partner bids four. Your call again. And don't worry, folks. There are some tricky ones coming up. So I, I can see you're all doing pretty darn well with these questions here some uh, experienced two over one bidders in the mix maybe all right and the correct bid which 88 percent of you are nailing here is pass and this is again that situation we certainly have extra stuff and we told our partner we had good extra stuff all right so here if partner's not willing to continue you could make another push toward a slam but the problem is you might already be too high even at the five level all right, just try to picture partner's possible hands. You can put some good cards in their hands and still not e not be able to make six and maybe not be able to make five. So as hard as it is to give up on a hand like this, without any prodding from partner, we're probably going to want to pass, right? Now, if you're thinking a little deeper about this, our minor suit cards are actually pretty darn good. And partner rates to be, you know, have at most four cards in those suits. So that's worth maybe thinking about, but the rest of our cards and our partner's most important suits leave a lot to be desired. So again, very close. I have definite sympathy for anybody that wants to bid 4-0 no on this hand, but pass is going to be the better part here. All right. This time partner opened a heart and it's your bid. Make your call. Oh, very good question, uh, Steve, or Steph. Partner's not reversing ever when we're in a two-over-one auction. Okay, so there are no reverses when we're in a game force. So a, a good example is a, a heart, two clubs, two spades. Right, The person bidding two spades, it looks like a reverse, but it doesn't show 17 plus points at all because we've already game forced. When we're in a game forcing auction, our ranges are going to be explored at the higher levels, right? So that is just a shape bid nonetheless. And it wasn't a reverse anyway. They open a spade and bid two hearts. They bid a lower ranking suit. But if you reverse it, heart, two clubs, two spades, still not a reverse because again, game forcing auctions. All right. So I tricked most of the people on this hand. Thank goodness. I was getting kind of bored here with all the correct answers this is actually jacoby to no trump uh or for whatever your system would play as a forcing major suit raise so in this case when partner opens a major and we have four card support in that suit and we have 13 or more points we use this bid to describe that hand and there is some system behind it so this is called jacoby to no trump it just says a hey, partner we're playing a game, and we're playing a game in hearts. So this is a game-forcing heart raise. Two diamonds is, well, it depends. If you're not playing Jacoby Tuno Trump, two diamonds is kind of your only way to do this. However, if you are, you've just denied four-card heart support. Okay, anytime you play Jacoby Tuno Trump and you have four-card heart support, if you don't bid that, you're denying it. All right, so two diamonds here, and then a follow-up of hearts would always guarantee three. And this is a good way to kind of add a little more specificity to your system. So partner kind of knows what kind of fit they're looking at in each of these spots. All right. Next case, partner opens a heart and it's your bid. And again, the questions have been really good tonight. So if you guys have any, fire them away. It'll be helpful for you guys and helpful for whoever else watches this afterwards.
And this is really good. We have what looks like a pretty normal response to this question. I get the same numbers pretty much every time I do this. Uh, the correct bid is one spade, but let's talk about it because this is where we're, we, we struggle sometimes on this question and everybody does, so don't worry if you got it wrong. Rule number one is we never want to misrepresent our shape in order to get to a game forcing bid. So technically two clubs would absolutely be game forcing. But if I bid two clubs and then I come back and bid two spades later, if I get the opportunity, I'm going to be guaranteeing usually four or more spades there. And I never want to misrepresent my shape to game force because we're starting off on a foot where we're making it unclear for partner. So in this case, I would always bid one spade because I have five of them. If I were four, four, I would still bid a spade. However, if I had like five clubs and four spades or six clubs and four spades, I would always game force first and then come back and bid spades. And just take a moment and chew on that. Think of the logic behind it. We want partner to know our shape more specifically at all times, right? We want to make the best bid that shows our shape. And if we start with clubs and then bid spades, partner's going to think, well, their clubs are longer or better. Right, so always start with your longest suit. And this is why we play other bids later on in the auction as game forcing as well. And we'll get to one of those. But at this point, we're just going to start with one spade. Those of you that bid two spades, I'm glad we had at least one person do that. That's awesome. That seems like it would be game forcing, but you jumped. And remember, two over one is never a jump. Or at least two over one game forcing is never a jump. Right. We're never going to jump to show this. So we just start with a simple one spade and then we'll see what we are going to do next. And here's where our partner bids two diamonds. So they've opened a heart. We bid a spade. They bid two diamonds. And now it's your call. All right, lots of choices here. Three clubs is the right choice. And this is right for one of two reasons, depending on your system. Uh, it is right in general without talking any system because you're the responder and you're bidding a new suit. But in fact, this should be a convention for most of you. This is fourth suit forcing. And this is what we use in lieu of our original two over one game forcing. Right? Whenever our side in a non-competitive auction, just like this one, bids all four suit that four, four suits, that last suit is just an artificial game forcing bid. And it kind of says, hey, I know we're going to game. I'm just not quite sure where that game's going to be. Tell me more. And specifically, let's see if you have three card spade support. That would be helpful. Right? But on this hand, you kind of can't go wrong. You bid three clubs because you don't want the auction to end, but it should be fourth suit forcing. Those of you that bid two know that's passable, right? We did not game force yet on this end, right? So if you bid two no Trump, partner could just pass and now you missed your game. And three no might be your best spot, except for those times where partner has three spades and you know some some sort of shape in their hand that's not conducive to no Trump, right? So three clubs, the best of all worlds, it's game forcing, and it absolutely says, I'm not sure where we're going. Tell me a little bit more. All right, now you get to the best game way more often than not. And right, so fourth suit forcing obviously is never going to be used in a two over one auction, by the way. Another common mistake that I'm just thinking about as I'm talking to you guys. Once you game force with two over one, fourth suit forcing is unnecessary, right? Because we're already in a game force. So if it happens in a two over one auction, and sometimes it does, it's always just a natural bid, right? So don't confuse the two. All right, so now partner opened a diamond and we wake up with this hand. What are we doing here?
Yeah, for sure. We bid two clubs because we definitely don't want to misrepresent our shape by bidding one spade. And we get the added awesome benefit of two clubs being game forcing. So we're going to have a lot of opportunity to show our spades. And also partner will now know that our clubs were definitely longer than our spades because we started there. All right. So if we let's say we reverse this a little bit or maybe we just let's take a club away and put it in the spade suit now i'm five five in spades and clubs i would always bid one spade all right so don't get me wrong here we're not doing this just to game force we're doing it because not only is it the most descriptive bid we have six clubs and four spades it is that added benefit of being a game forcing bid all right cool next hand so we've opened a spade on this one and our partners bid two clubs. Now this is the first time all evening that we're talking about it from the other side of the table when partners game forced and we've opened. The reason I don't need to spend too much time on this is because if you just remember one thing, you'll be great at rebidding after two or one. Always bid your shape. Make the most descriptive bid to show your partner what shape hand you have. So when you have extra cards in the suit you open, you rebid that suit. If you have a second four card suit, you bid that. If you're balanced, five, three, three, two, you bid no trump, right? So that's the only key to success here as a responder to the two over one bid. Bid your shape every time. Don't worry if you have extra stuff. Bid on the lowest available level anyway because you're going to get to describe that extra stuff later because partner cannot pass the bid you're about to make unless you bid a game, right? So always remember those things. Bid your shape and don't worry about your points right away. And I'll give it a second or two more for you guys to pop some answers in. This time you open the spade and partner bid two clubs. And yeah, you guys are naturals. Not too surprising in the, in this particular lesson, because two over one, as as maybe high level as it might seem to some people that haven't played it before, is actually super logical. It's almost exactly the same as your normal system, that standard American stuff we play. Almost exactly the same, except for the benefit of having a game forcing auction very low. Right? And most of you got it, got it right. You just bid three clubs. Right? You show your four card support for the club suit. Some of you are maybe making uh, an interesting bid. Your three diamonds would maybe be some sort of splinter bid for clubs. I like your I like <laughs> I like your style here, but again, you've possibly just brought it up to a level that you, know, you don't necessarily want to with only four card club support. And you know, I don't know. I kind of like it, but three clubs is probably going to get the job done way more often than not. And it's your only choice, by the way, with this hand. You can't rebid spades because that's going to show six. If you bid hearts, it's going to show four. And if you bid no trump, you might have just put yourself in the worst possible spot because your diamond holding is nothing good. <laughs> You're going to get in a lot of trouble by bidding no trump with this hand. So just a simple, hey, buddy, this is my shape. You do with it what you will. We're in a game force. And partner bids three spades now. Your call. So we have a very, very large percentage of you getting this wrong, actually. So let's think about what has happened so far. We opened a spade, partner bid two clubs, we raised, and now they bid three spades. This is that extra value spade. My partner could have jumped to four spades with a minimum. They bid just three spades. That says, hey, partner, I have a spade fit for sure, uh, which has to be three. Right, partner didn't bid Jacoby to no trump, and also 
This was the first thing they did after game forcing. They showed their support. We also have extras. Not only are good high guard points in two fits in clubs and spades, likely, we have shortness in diamonds, which is extra stuff as well. Partner has done their job of showing extras. It's time for us to do ours. And this is what's called a control bid, guys. Four clubs. And not to get too deep into control bids, but it's a very good thing to have available when you play two over one game forcing because now when you both have extra values, you get to explore the possibility of slam without committing yourself too high, right? You're not committed to more than the four level by bidding four clubs. And this is kind of what we're showing here. And what this does is it does two things. It shows that we have first round control in the club suit. I would say for now, first round control is enough. You can decide to go the more advanced route. And it says, hey, I also have extra stuff. Do you want to play higher than just game? Okay. You can only use this when two conditions are met. And it's, you know, you're going to tell why it's in this lesson because the two conditions are we have to be in a game forcing auction, which we were right from North's first bid. And we have to have agreed upon a trump suit as our fit. And here we have met both of those conditions. We have a spade fit for sure and we're playing at least game. So the four club bid here is starting the conversation of, hey, can we play higher than just game? It says, I have extras, I hear you do too. Let's see where we're going. And now we see partner, well, sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm misconstruing this, this uh, actual problem. This is the same exact hand. However, this time we opened a spade, partner bid two clubs, we bid three clubs and partner bid four spades. So what do we do with the same hand on this auction? And folks, uh, oh, good question on the last one. Uh, why four clubs and not four no trump? And the answer is four no trump commits us to the five level. And I don't think we would ever be willing to do that with this hand on that auction because we don't know necessarily how many extra values partner has and where they might be. Four clubs splits the difference. It shows extra values. It shows the desire to play slam, but now we give our partner room to tell us if they just want to play four spades or if they also have some controls to bid. And we get to accomplish this before we ever get to four spades. This allows us to press the eject button and play just game when our hands don't necessarily match well as far as controls or things like that. And so that's a very good question. And this is why control bids are preferred in most of these situations because four no trump commits us to at least five spades. Whereas a control bid with bad hands or not quite the maximums we think they are, we get to bail out at four spades instead. Very good question. And this one should be a clear cut pass folks. Right, we, Heard our partner say, hey, I have a minimum, right? I game forced and then I jumped to four spades. So that's like a 13 count we're looking at right there. So here we are always absolutely going to just pass four spades. Another good question by Bob here. Could our partner want to play five clubs? And the answer is absolutely not. Even though early in the hand we discussed the club suit by raising, partner committed us to playing spades the moment they they bid three spades or in this one, four spades. So there's no chance we would ever want to play in a minor suit fit when we know we have a major suit fit, right? Majors score more. And of course, game is lower, right? So partners never going to actually want to play five clubs. Any new suit, even clubs there, would be a desire to play spades at a higher level. I hope that makes sense, guys. All right, we're going to jump to the next one here. This time we opened one spade and partner bid two diamonds. Your call with this hand. Uh, yeah, Steph, that's a, a good question also. In this case, we would, if we're only bidding first round controls, we would kind of stick to that. Uh, some higher level agreements would allow you to bid first or second. Uh, I would say in, in these cases, if partner bid four diamonds, you know, you, you would probably still want to try to pursue something. But now 
you can use for no trump as part of all these sequences so don't think just because you decided to control bid that you can't use for no trump if it's still available it'll still be key card for that suit so you can go about it that way as well a lot of times you're using a mixture of both all right very good guys you're taking this to heart which is awesome always show your shape right you you opened one spade Partner bid two diamonds. You bid three clubs. Hey, partner, I have five spades and four clubs. And think about the difference here. You just got to tell partner about nine cards in your hand, five spades and four clubs. That is way more descriptive than any other bid you could make with this hand. Right? And in fact, some of them would be outright, you know, kind of lying to partner a little bit. But here, just show your partner your shape. And now you guys will have a better idea of what's going on, especially your partner. All right, next case. So after you bid three clubs, partner bids three spades. Your bid. So you opened a spade, partner bid two diamonds. You bid three clubs, and they bid three spades. Okay, I'm glad some of you, I'm pretty sure most of you recognize that three spades was extra stuff. However, that's awesome because I hope that's enough for us to make four spades on this hand. All right, partner showed extra stuff and we're very happy to see that, but our hand is a minimum. And this is how we show it, right? We just bid four spades. We're not saying we have a bad hand. We open the bidding, but we have a bad hand for what we've shown you so far. And the question I get most frequently here is, well, what if partner has 20 points? And the answer is, they're not going to stop bidding, folks. All right? You've already opened the bidding, and always remember that. If partner has 20 points and you just bid four spades here, they're not letting you play four spades. Right? They'll bid key card or make some control bids or whatever it takes to get you to a slam if you have one. Right? So never worry about that happening. Show your hand. Tell your partner what you have as far as values and shape. And if they have a huge hand and need to play slam, they are in control of that. Right? Uh, the four heart bid would have been a control bid, by the way. So those of you that bid four hearts, you made a good control bid. However, when you do this, you're also showing a lot of extra stuff. You're saying, hey, I think slam is possible. And you can't know that. Partner showed extra stuff, but not the world's fair yet. Right? So four hearts would show a lot better hand, but it would definitely show the ace of hearts. So that is partial credit there. All right, next case. Partner opens a spade and it's your bid. This is that uh, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Uh, this, once again, is Jacoby Tuno Trump, folks. Uh, four card support and partners major and a game forcing hand. We bid Tuno Trump. Right, so that is the best call with this hand. When we bid two of a minor here, and this is uh, kind of the problem that was referenced earlier. Um, but if we bid two of a minor here, we're just always denying four cards and partners major because Jacoby Tino Trump is the way we navigate these hands. Um, if we took the two of spades and put it in the heart suit, this was what we were talking about earlier. I think, Steph, you put this question up there. Um, so if I, if I just put the two of spades in with the hearts and partner opened a spade, now I would bid two clubs, right? Because I can't bid two hearts to show five or more 
And also, I want to bid the lowest of my lies, basically, in these spots. So I'd bid two clubs if I had three spades, four hearts, three clubs, and three diamonds. Um, and sometimes I see this mistake. The only time it's two over one game forcing is when it's opening bid of one of a suit and two of a different suit, a lower ranking different suit, right? So one of a major, two of a major is just six to nine or six to 10, just like it always was, right? One diamond, two diamonds is whatever you agree it to be, but it's not game forcing, right? You have to have changed suits and it's going to be a higher ranking suit at the one level followed by a lower ranking suit at the two level. All right, next case. You've opened a spade, partner bid, two clubs. And now it's your call. Quite a few different choices being made here, but 73% or now 75% are bidding their shape correctly by bidding two no trump. That is the call with this hand. And I want you to just look at this shape. When you have this shape specifically and you open your major and partner bids two over one, you just always bid two no trump. I don't want you to worry about stoppers unless the opponents come in after two clubs at some point. I don't want you to worry about any of that. I want you to show your shape the best way possible. So when you open a major, partner bids two over one and you bid two no, partner will know you have this exact, exact shape. You have five of your major and three, three, two in the other three suits. Okay, not necessarily always hearts, diamonds, and clubs. You might have three clubs, two diamonds, and three hearts, right? So it's your five, three, three, two in some way or the other. Good job, guys. Another common question I get here is, does this show 18, 19? The answer is absolutely not. The only time the two no rebid shows 18, 19 is when the auction starts one, one. A one level opening bid followed by a one level response. That's the only 1819 2 no rebid. The rest of these are just, hey, I'm 5 3 3 2. Do with that what you will. And partner bids three spades with that. And now it's your call. All right, beautiful. Four spades it is. Again, we've already opened the bidding. Partner game forced and showed extra values, but this is our minimum, guys. We're not going to be willing to explore slam from our side of the table, at least right now. All right, so just bid game, and partner can certainly continue if they want. We've shown exactly what we have. Good, good, good. All right, this time we opened a heart, and partner bid two clubs, and it's your bid. No, you, you don't really want to let partner decide no trump or your suit, um, especially when your hand really had some holes in it and the unbid suits, right? So I, 
these are tough questions to answer because I know a lot of you that have played duplicate have seen the results and said, my goodness, this guy bid 3-0 and they got a much better score. That is usually only for the times where you really want to gamble, if that makes sense. If everyone's playing four spades, I'm happy to play four spades, right? Because four spades is usually going to take more tricks than three no trump in a normal situation. There are times, though, when a very good player and a good partnership can kind of figure out when they don't want to play four of a major, or at least when three no rates to take the same number of tricks. It's hard to figure those situations out, but you don't want to be the one offering it up unless you have a really good reason for doing so, right? Because the problem is, if they knock out one stopper and your your major suit isn't running, now you're going down in 3-0 no and you're just cold for your major suit game. So I would go for, a, I would always be very conservative with those decisions, but it's a very good question. Uh, and here the answer is two spades. The reason this one is here is because of the question that Steph was asking earlier. This is what looks like it would be a reverse. You opened a heart and then you bid spades at the two level. But it is not showing a hand with extra values at all in this situation. And the reason is we're already in a game forcing auction. So when I bid two spades here, I am essentially just showing my shape the best way possible. I'm not showing any extra values at all. I'm just telling my partner, hey, I started with five hearts and four spades. Right? Not 17 plus points, not a good hand, just the hand that I open the bidding with. Bingo. All right, this time partner opened a heart, and it is our choice with this hand. This is like a horse race to see which of the two answers will get the most votes. And will the majority be right or wrong? It's going to be close. The correct bid is one spade, which means 50% of you bid two diamonds and a little less than 50 because my bid is included here, bid one spade. Here's the rub. Two diamonds is game forcing and you definitely have a game forcing hand but remember you're going to be distorting your shape when you do it this way if you bid two diamonds and then you come back and bid spades partner is always going to assume you have longer diamonds okay so here bid your four card major don't think when you start playing two over one that you have to game force every time it's possible and here it certainly is possible to game force but the message you're sending is kind of distorted Right, so bid your four card major first. You're going to have opportunities to game force later or just bid game if you have it. All right, so never worry. Even when you're not game forcing initially, your one spade bid is still absolutely forcing. So don't worry. You're going to get another chance to bid. Not necessary to game force right away. And here's your other chance. When you bid a spade, partner bids a no trump. And now it is your call. Uh, no, Bob, uh, good question. Partner will never assume five plus spades when you just respond one spade, right? Unless you're, you know, unless you're playing something that I don't even want to discuss, Flannery. But but here, you're never going to show five plus spades with just a one level response. It's always four plus to start. Right? There are times when the opponents interfere that it might be five or when it goes one spade, two hearts, it's five for sure. Right, but the one level responses are pretty much always the same, four or more when there's no interference. All right, good. We have a vast 
majority of you making the incorrect bid, which I like. It means we got some work to do here. The best bid is three no, right? Remember, you know you have game, and you also know you don't have a fit. And when a heart of spade partner responded to no trump showing a balance 12 to 14, you bid the game you know you have. Uh, two diamonds here would be natural, and it would also be forcing, but you know where you belong, right? The biggest mistake you could make here is allowing the opponents to learn more about your hands on the way to three no trump which is your spot right so just bid three no now and now part all they know is your partner has five hearts and you have four spades and you don't have a fit rather than showing hey i have four diamonds too or, or something like that when you're uncertain of where you belong that's what those two diamond bids or those new minor forcing bids are made for when you know where you belong don't forget just bid it, right? Don't worry about getting fancy or using two over one or funny conventions. If you know where you belong, don't make the mistake of allowing for things to go wrong. Because <laughs> trust me, I've seen everything go wrong at the bridge table. <laughs> All right, next case here. Your partner opened a heart, and this is the hand you wake up with. Your bid. We have about five or six more to go, I think. Uh, I mean for these to usually go about an hour, but if you guys don't mind, we'll finish this off. Uh, if anyone needs to leave, go right ahead. You can always come watch the end later. But uh, we will get through these last few hands. And this one we can... We can dispense with very early. All of you are 100% here. Two clubs, game forcing, natural. Just want to know where we're going. And after you bid two clubs, partner bids two diamonds. So now we your partner opened a heart, you bid two clubs, and they bid two diamonds. So this one might be a little confusing, especially after what I just said. And, uh, you know, that's just my lot in life as a bridge teacher. I like to confuse you. But there's a good reason for only bidding two no trump with this hand. And the reason is we're not really quite sure what partner's shape is yet. We know it's at least five hearts and four diamonds. But we want to suggest no trump for sure. That's the only bid that should be in your mind. So it was either 2 no or 3 no. But when we're kind of not sure where partner's going to go next and we're in a game for us, it's okay to just bid 2 no. And this just allows partner to describe their hand further if they need to. If they have nothing else to say, you're almost always going to see 3 no, right? But if they have a little more shape they want to get off their chest or anything else they might want to say here if they want to play higher, we're going to allow them the room to do that. Right? So this isn't necessarily us saying we have a lot of extra. When we're, when we're rebidding no trump, we're kind of saying, hey, I can play no trump. Can you? And here we see that partner needed that extra room to describe their hand. And they used it to bid three hearts. And now it's back to you. And so I, I guess a, a general rule there, and I don't want to be hard and fast with the rules, but... A general rule is when, when we want to offer up no trump in, in myriad situations, but here especially, offer up no trump at a relatively low level if you can, especially if partners bid a couple suits and we're not sure what their exact shape is. So give them a chance to, to further describe. And now we don't have to torture partner by bidding three no because it sounds like they have more hearts than they originally told us. And now we get to make this nice four heart bid. And that's because you know, we allowed partner to, to further describe their hand because we're in this nice game forcing situation. So four hearts was great. Most of you nailed this one. Again, 
the pass we will never know who this is but it's a very good mistake the pass is bad because we game forced right we told partner we were playing game and for all we know this partner can still have a 20 count for all we know right so here we can never pass below game remember that book it all right next case here partner opens a heart and it's your bit You guys are really doing well tonight. I know I might have done this lesson before, so we had a lot of studiers or just a, a lot of very good two over one students. I rarely see this higher percentage of people crushing it. And not surprising, we all crushed this one. Two clubs, the only bid that should make sense by now. It's a four card suit, the only four card suit we have. We should know that we rate to do well in hearts, right? So we're planning to steer the auction in that direction. Well, we just start by game forcing, natural four plus clubs, 13 plus points. And now partner bids two hearts, your bid. And the correct call as we wait for the answers to come in is three hearts. So let's look at the, the choices we made here. 76% of you bid three hearts. That's the right bid. Uh, this is 16 high card points. And here's the problem. That is definitely extra values, but it's flat. But that shouldn't matter, right? All of our cards appear to be working for us. We have three aces, right? And we certainly have a hard fit, a nine card hard fit at that. So this is extra values for sure, the definition of it. So we slow down. The four heart bidders, you just showed this hand minus a queen, basically. You showed like a, at most a flat 14. And so let's say we take away the queen of spades. That's kind of what four hearts would look like here. The two spade, two no and four spade bids are all denying heart support. So remember when you have three card support for partners major, always make that support showing bid your second bid, right? Partner doesn't know yet. Make sure they do. A lot of times we just say, hey, we have a fit. And you forget that partner doesn't know that yet, right? So in this case, even though you're flat, 16 is extras in any any universe you're, you're dealing with. So just show the extras and see what partner does. You can be confident that partner is not flat, right? They have a six card heart suit. So where you're flat, their shape might really make up for, for what, what you're looking at in this hand. And after you bid three hearts, partner bids four hearts. Now this is just a 50-50 choice. Is that extras or a minimum? Have they shown extras on this auction or have they shown a minimum? here this is a minimum for sure right they they showed their extra hearts they have six or more but then when we showed extra values they said okay let's just play four hearts as always just hey i have some sort of minimum so after they do that what do we do with our nice 16 count here after they bid four hearts Yeah, this should be a pretty simple one at the end here. When partner shows a minimum, we're done, right? We, we were kind of leaning towards showing a minimum anyway initially, but my goodness, right? We, we certainly have you know, done more than enough to try to get our partner to bid more. So we are absolutely done with this hand. All right, guys, that is the last question. 
Uh, I have one question in the chat here. Does one heart, two clubs, two hearts show five? Good, good question. We talked about this earlier, but it's worth revisiting. In this case, it should always be six or more. Now, there are, there are two schools of thought about this. I would say a lot of the expert level pairs will play that it only means five still. I think that is way, way too confusing. I would always play this as showing six plus, especially when you're just starting this system. Later on, when you kind of get more used to it and, and adding gadgets to it as well, you can decide to make it show five or more. But I think in normal bridge, when you rebid a suit, it's six plus. I don't like to change that at all. It's hard enough learning a kind of new wrinkle in a system while changing what the rebid should show. So yeah, for sure, it should show six plus. Guys, thank you so much for joining. I will see some of you here locally for sure. For those of you that joined from all across the country and North America and Greece, I think I saw. Uh, thanks so much. I, I hope you enjoy this. Next Thursday, the same exact time, we will have a one no Trump fortune class. And then the following Thursday, we're just going to do a big bunch of questions on bridge base. I'm going to try to put like 60 or so questions in there that are going to cover a whole bunch of different auctions and trouble auctions with this system. All right, folks, thank you so much. And I will see you next time.